I've known Mama Roxy all my life. She was a mother to each and every one of us. She will be sadly missed and she was loved by everyone who came in contact with her. My heart felt sympathy goes out to the family from the McNeil family. May her soul rest in peace. Hi guys, hi grandma. Hi, Say grandma. hi girls. Hi grandma. So it's me, Katie. I know you love to call me that grandma. <laughs> and Chloe and Zoe and Molly. We just wanted to tell you that we are so, so happy to have spent the time that we spent with you. You know, it breaks my heart because it wasn't much time that I would have looked forward to. In fact, when we got news of you going, I took it very harshly. And I took it so harsh, I got so mad at God. I felt like everything was so wrong because I was really looking forward to being able to come and see you in Jamaica before time. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason, Grandma. And I gotta tell you that I am so grateful for all that is because of you. And ever since, you have allowed me to flow in life in ways that I've never looked or seen possible. And I just wanna tell you, thank you. You may not be here physically, but in spirit and in truth, you are with us all. I am just wanted to take the time to tell you that I love you and I thank you and I miss you and I honor you and I am so grateful for every single second that I ever had the chance to spend with you. I will never forget you. You reign in my heart. You reign in my thoughts. And you reign in my presence <laughs> even to this day, Grandma. So on behalf of me, and our family, my family, my girls, say hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Grandma. Hi. We just want to tell you how much we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you, Grandma. You want to say something, Mom? Yeah. Go ahead, baby. Hi, Grandma. You know, to today is the day Mommy. that the Lord has really made for yeah. to pass away. Mommy. He know that you have living for a very, very mommy. long time. Yes, just mommy. like mommy has just mommy. said. Mommy. And even though you can't feel us in the present, you can't see us in the present, I know that everyone knows that you, that you and we are still in each other's hearts. You are still in our hearts and you have us in your heart. So I just wanted to say that everyone misses you and we will never forget you. We love you so much, Grandma. And we will never forget you. You are the person we will not forget. Thank you, Grandma. We love you. Bye, Grandma. Tears are a language that God indeed understands. On behalf of the Norwood Seventh-day Adventist Church Communication Department, we send our well wishes and tribute to the family of the late Mama Roxy. Her son, Brother Delroy Campbell, has been an integral part of the Communication Department. For many years, he has lent and given his talent to the service and the spreading of the gospel for Jesus Christ. In this time of bereavement, we give you hope, trust in God, rely on his ever saving hand. Believe that one day soon, all of this will be done with. Death will be no more. Grave, where is your sting? We pray with you. We keep you in our prayers and we will always remember you as your son continues to lend his talent and strength to the service of God. May she rest in peace.
Um, hi, this is Margaret Shirley Data. Um, I I don't even know where to start from where to begin. But Mama Rox, Miss Roxy, she was like a mom to me. I love her so much and I missed her. My condolence to the family. I can't tell you all. I can't say I know how you feel because I went through it. But Miss Roxy was a nice, quiet, peaceful, and kind lady. When my mom cook, she would share with Miss Roxy kids. And when Miss Roxy cook, Mama Rox, she would share with us. She would look over um, off the veranda and say, Margaret, you don't eat dinner yet? And we say, Mama Rox, you know, say, Mama not come yet. We can always carry a plate, go across the fence. And Mama Rox give you some dinner. So, my heart goes out to her family. May her soul rest in peace. Mama Rox, Miss Roxy, nice, peaceful lady. I never see Miss Roxy in an argument with somebody. Never, ever hear Miss Roxy the cuss. Nobody at all. Mama Rox, I love her from the beginning to the end. Rest in peace. I just want to say condolence to the family of Mama Roxy. I just want to encourage you to keep heart because Mama Roxy has gone on before. She has gone to be with the Lord. And I know she don't want us to fret and worry because she is resting. She's in a better place. So just be encouraged. Don't mourn and, and grieve as, as one that have no hope. Sleep on Mama Roxy, rest in the arms of your sweet deliverer. Mama Roxy, that's what I called her, Mama Roxy. Mama, you know, I've known her since I married to her son, Michael. And um, from the first day I met her, you know, we just hit it off. Because she told me that um, I reminded her of Michael's first wife, Marcia. And she went on and on about how much I just reminded her of her. And then when she learned when my birthday was, her birthday, our birthday is one day apart, that made it even worse. You know, she was a caring person, a loving person, always someone nice to be around, always encouraging you in whatever situation. I often tell people that Mama Roxy is the best mother-in-law I could have ever asked for. Yes, she don't pick sides. And if she ever pick side, she don't more pick side with me and not with George, right? Um, I'm really gonna cherish the memories I had with her. I'm really missing her. My heart is really broken. But I know that she's in a better place. She's no longer in any more pain. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you, and I'm going to miss you. Mama Rox, I love you, and I know that your soul rests in peace. May God help you that we will meet at a beautiful river. Mama Rox, God bless you. Thank you, 
I refuse to. Yes, speaking about Mama Rox, she was my first lover <laughs> who bare me two children, which I am very proud of. Today, I'm here to be the fury and be of the life eternal. And I'm hoping that she will find peace and rest. All right. I was blessed with the opportunity to spend quality time with my grandma, you know, visiting, um, you know, spending time with her when my sister wasn't around, being able to cook for her and learning from her some of the values that she had for herself, you know, being a Christian being kind, being loving, you know? These are some of the few things that she left with me and her memory will forever live on. I miss you, Grandma, the conversations we had together, the walks we took, your cooking, how funny you were. I love you so much, Grandma. Rest in peace. My dearest mother, you are the most caring, kind, loving, compassionate, funniest person, amazing person ever. The Lord needed an angel, so he took you, and the angels in heaven are rejoicing with you. My sweet, dear mother, may your soul rest in peace. I will always, always. Although we didn't spend as much time together as I would have liked, the time we did spend together were amazing. You are fun, funny, and most of all, a big part in our family. We love you dearly. Hi, Grandma. We just wanted to say we hope you are watching us down here up while you're up in heaven. And we want to say we love you and rest in peace. Mwah. <laughs> Mama passed away on the 14th. And we all wish she never passed away that day. But she's still here. She's right beside us. You can't see her, but she's still here. She's right here standing in the house beside all of us and when she was here she used to sing songs she was a very nice lady and we wish she never passed away all of us i would like to celebrate the life of my grandmother mama roxy she was a powerful woman of god no more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again, and the praises to the great I am who we will in the light of the risen 
Rest in peace, Grandma. Blessings to you all, family and friends. My name is Audley Scott and I would consider myself a family member of Sister Roxy. Growing up together in Glendevon, yes, we enjoyed fun times together. Now that she has departed from us, from my family to yours, we say condolences to you. And we hope that the strength of God will be able to keep you in this time of bereavement. We look for the day when there be no more night, no more tear, and we'll never be crying again. No more tears, no more pain, never crying again, sing praises to Take good care of yourselves, family. God bless you. Like a ship sailing on, on a trail so rough and warm, I'm so far from shore, I'm so far from home. I say that I'm in search of a reason to go home. But there I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm clouds may rock the shape of mine, the lie of my Savior will lead me safely. to be in a better place, first in the arms of God. Amen. Amen. Rest in peace, Mama Roxy. Rest in peace. You know, R.I.P., you know. Um, Ms. Valerie and the whole family, you know. Christy family, Michelle, Maggie and everybody. Bless upon yourself. They are, you know, represent. Yeah. So you go. Jin Jin, big up yourself. Big up yourself, Miss Valerie. And you know all of the hell that they pass through and thing. One love every time. Mama Roxy, a woman of God. Mama Roxy. Mama Roxy always take care of me, Alicia. Always. He look out for me. Not a day go by, no come from her. Call me. Ingrid, Alicia, always. We live with Mama Roxy. She's a woman of God. We love you in life. And we do the same in death. Mama Roxy. Not even we alone. We look after everybody. Friends, neighbors. You look after. 
Mama Roxy. Every day. You talk and give you a lot of joke, Mama Roxy. You are a very kind, nice, loving, caring person. You give me joke all the while. Remember the day when me lick right, you say, you pick me them a trouble me bugs and palling. And when me start to quarrel, then call me Kakayadimbo. You come. Ingrid, what you they cost me for? Kaki a girl. You say same thing? You they say, you me a cost you pity them a call me Kaki a girl. And you they do the same thing. Me go on my yard. You call me, come man, come greater the coconut. And you start to give me a joke and me half a laugh. And you say, Lisa, come. Me are your friend. Come, me and you are friends. And you start to give you a lot of jokes and we have to laugh again. Mama Roxy, we love you. Dearly. Mama Roxy, your name can't stop Carl. And you will be Miss Mama Roxy. Will Miss. Sleep on in heaven. Sleep on Mama Roxy. My memory of the grandma is the time when me and Tiana were out here watching TV and Mama called us in her room to sing and we sang songs and she was really happy and I really love that because whenever Mama is happy she makes you feel happy inside so that's why I really loved when she was happy and the day when Mama died was hard for everybody because she knows all of us and she loves us all dearly. And if I had one wish was to see Mama just one last time.
Bongo ready. I'm going to use. Here. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I'm daddy. Right. Just a minute.
We have too many persons around, so um, we have 18 persons under the tent, so we need eight persons to leave. Um, so we're going to ask you please to so go ahead for me so that we can start. Only 10. Only 10. Only 10 persons. The others need to be... I'm not sure the Check. distance away. I don't know the protocol for that. All right, so they need only 10 persons under the tent as the pastor said, all right? That's under the tent, all right? And for persons just coming in, I'll make it quick. All right, we need only 10 under the tent, people. Please. Why? He's God all over the nation, and he always will be God. Oh, God is God, and he always will be God. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the heart and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past. And as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are all asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which growing up. In the morning, it flourisheth and growing up. And in the evening, it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed in thine anger. And in thy wrath we are troubled. So teach us to number our days, that we may get our hearts 
get a heart of wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, and let us repent concerning thy servants. O oh, satisfy us in the morning with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down and is, he fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. For as for man, his days is like grass and a flower of the field so flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall be no more. So Lord, teach us to number our days, so that we will apply our hearts to wisdom. This morning we are here to celebrate the life of a precious dear sister who have gone on before to be with her maker, Sister Roxina Ellis, known as Mama Roxy. And so we want to rejoice today and we want to give God thanks for the life that she lived on this earth or contribution, having born so many children, and uh, I guess I know the children are happy today that mom treat us well, and uh, she has led us, and now we want to rejoice that the Lord has take her, taken her, her home um, to be with him. So today is a day of rejoicing, and Thanksgiving. I'm going to ask you to turn to your programs at this time and uh, as the praise team will lead us in singing when we all get to heaven. Said, Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will see and shall the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Love will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the cause of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. 
come to do the opening prayer this time. Let us pray. Almighty God. Hallelujah. Great I am, the everlasting Father. Lord, we thank you for this day. Though we are grieving, and weeping, but we don't weep as others do. Hallelujah, because we know that there's coming a day, oh God, when Mama Rox will rise again. Hallelujah. God, I pray for the family, including myself, that you will give us strength. God, in this time, hallelujah, of sorrow, and this time, oh God, when it's not really a good feeling but oh god i pray that you'll envelop everyone with your love with your comforting hearts god as we proceed lord with this thanksgiving going home service god i pray that you will bless the rest of this service and let your presence and your anointing continue to be in this place in jesus name praise the lord Amen. We're going to be having our scripture reading at this time. Jeanna Brown, great granddaughter. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Um, this Bible scripture will be taken from. First Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to the past, saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abundant in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends a portion of the Lord's holy word. Honor it by saying thanks be to God. Amen. As the minister. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Of course, this is, of course, another funeral service. 
but we want to encourage the family members, close friends, that without God, nothing is possible. And so, I pray that you'll become comforted and be connected to Christ because only what you do for him will last. And I pray that this song will bless your hearts today. I face the mountain that I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know. I need a life I've never had before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes the trust to see. Sometimes.
And you know, I just look around and see persons in the sun. I watch that lady, how sincere she is. She must have loved Mama Roxy to be out there in that burning sun. And we want to appreciate all of you who have taken the time out, even though we have all of these restrictions. Amen. I hope that somebody could just exchange with her, give her a seat out of the sun a bit. If you can do some shifting sometimes, some go out and come in and allow persons to sort of get some shade. I'm going to ask Delroy Camber to come and uh, say a word or two. He said he's the youngest child for Mama Roxy and he wants to say a word. Come, Brother Delroy. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, so I was asked to do an item here, and I refused to do it, you know, because it's not easy. But, you know, can't allow mama to go in the ground without me saying something. All right, so a powerful woman of God, a woman who raised eight children, you know, and in a lot of cases, the fathers may have not, not been there 90%. All right, so we give thanks for her. Um, I don't know if I say really, you know, Mr. Talk. All right, so I don't even know what to say. Um, Mama was a blessed woman. She's blessed me with so many uh, wonderful memories and this relates to her life. It's inspirational, so don't move. I told you guys not to move, you know, why are you moving? Why are you moving? Get back to the mics, please. All right, so thanks, friends and relatives are coming out. You know, we're live now on Facebook on Arby Lewis, but later on, Run about seven o'clock, then um, we go on my page, which is Gospel Beach Radio Online on Facebook, and we'll be streaming this as well as a lot of condolences that we get from friends and family. It's really a virtual condolences service. All right, inspirationals, help me. Mama, you'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie you down. Mama, you rise again. Death can't keep you in the ground. Oh, Mama, you rise again. Ain't no power can tie you down. Mama, you rise again. Mama Roxy was a faithful woman of God. 
in our own way, serving the Lord. I'm going to ask Tony and Camber, granddaughter, to come at this time to give a tribute. Tony and Camber, granddaughter. If you know this song, please help me sing it. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore, so far from home. I said.
eye of the storm. We're going to have a tribute right now from King's Chapel. We're going to ask Sister Paula Campbell to come. Sister Paula is a Women's Fellowship President of the church, and I know she's also her daughter-in-law, the wife of the famous Georgia Campbell. So we're going to ask her to come at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tribute for the late Roxtina Ellis from the King's Chapel family. Psalm 90 paints a very sober picture of the reality and brevity of life as we know it. Moses reminds us, writing from God's perspective, you sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. The length of our days are 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow for they quickly pass and we fly away. A very thought-provoking reminder. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. There is little doubt that Sister Roxtina Ellis followed the above principles because in sending her children to Sunday school and listening to the good reports that they brought home, something stilled her soul. As she observed the transformation in her children, she heeded their invitation, and so in January 1982, she not only repented of her sins, she got baptized in Jesus' name, but was gloriously filled with the Holy Ghost. For Sister Ellis, there was no turning back. At last, she found the one whom her soul longed for, Jesus became her confidant, friend, husband, soulmate, you name it. She was very focused. There was no double-mindedness as all for her. She surrendered to Jesus. King's Chapel became her life, her home away from home. It was home, work, and church. She came in at a time when revival fires were burning. Sister Roxy, as she was affectionately called, became an integral part of the King's Chapel Assembly. One of the ministries she became involved in was the Sunday school, not having an official position, but she was involved in visitation and ensuring that as often as she could, her children, neighbor's children would be a part of the entourage. Still not satisfied, she quickly aligned herself to the auxiliary department, which was under the leadership of the late Sister Lynette Reynolds, assisting with meals preparation and anything her hands found to do. Sister Roxy placed strong emphasis on prayer and was a regular member of the Thursday prayer group. Despite her illness with diabetes, Sister Roxy made sure she fasted. It was on one of these Thursdays after prayer meeting, as she waited at the gully bus stop, she fainted as her blood sugar went very low. Did this experience cause her to seize her Thursday commitment to the day of fasting and prayer? Oh no, she along with the late Sister Francine Houghton were two of the regular pillars at the Thursday prayer meetings. She was a very respectful person and many were drawn to her. Sister Roxy always greeted you with a warm and welcoming smile. She was a faithful member of this assembly and gave support whether in cash or kind. Even when she was wheelchair bound, Sister Roxy could be seen worshiping, and this she did up to the time she became a shut-in. 
Sister Roxina Ellis, you have run the race and kept the faith. You will be missed. To the members of the bereaved family, please accept condolences from Pastor Frank Kellier and the King's Chapel family. God bless you. Amen. We will invite Brother George Campbell to come at this time with his tribute. And then we'll go to Tina Fairclough, granddaughter, to come to do the eulogy. Hello. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm so glad to be here this afternoon. I could miss this one. If I should put a little title on this, it would be, I Remember Mama. And the reason for this, in our world today, there are many people who brought children in the world, but there are not many mothers. She was a mother. When I think about my mother, like someone would say, no one is good. So I put it in a different way. She was an extract from goodness, a bronze thunderkin of love. My mother knew how to love somebody. She didn't just talk about it. When she gave you a meal, you can feel that the, the main ingredients was love. When she welcomed you, you could see that the main ingredient was love. We came up on the poor conditions. I remember my mom working at the post office. And there's some days, like on a Friday, there was no money, there was no food. As she get a salary, she would rush home with something and give to us and go back to work. I remember mama. Because for me, love is not just something you talk about. Just like what is in our world today, our government will say, okay, I love you Jamaicans, unless we are poverty stricken. And they will eat the biggest meal they can. And that's what in all over the world is that love. Is that love when your, your pocket is full of it? And you pass me by and say, I love you. My children are hungry. There's no food in my house. It happened in the church world. It happened in the political world. It happened among organizations all over the world. But when I remember my mother, she taught me what love is all about. This is something I will never forget. So, as from this day onwards, every day for me will be Mother's Day. Because I can't forget my mother. She didn't just talk about, I love you, but she showed me the very essence of what love is all about. And I can remember in St. John 3 and verse 16, where it says, for God so love. That so love is very important. When you have that so love, it means you give your all. That's when Jesus says, the widow gave the most. She didn't have the millions. She didn't have the thousands. She, she have a might, but that's all she has, and she gave it. That was love is all about. That's what my mama was. A lot of people today can tell you, my, your mom fed me when I needed it. My, your mom gave me all she could. That's what my mama is. That's why I have to fly. going on to the ground without I'm being here. I will always remember mama. And for me, every day is Mother's Day. God bless you. Praise the Lord and afternoon, everyone. 
the eulogy for Roxina L., the late Roxina L. Roxina, otherwise known as Mama Roxy, was born on July 20, June 27, 1934, in Logan, Adelphi, to parents Ishmaela Gallimore and Levi Ellis. She was one of three children, two girls and a boy. She grew up in Cold Spring, Hanover, with her aunt, Bibi, and her husband, Uncle Levi, who, Uncle Lee, sorry, who, where she attended the Gurney Mount Primary School. She moved to Montego Bay, where she lived with her mother for a short time. While in Montego Bay, she met Sigri Clark, and their union brought forth three children, Donald Clark, Rennick Clark, and Vilma Clark Lewis. She later met Baron Thompson, and this union produced two more children, two girls, Pauline Thompson Salmon and Barbara Thompson Harding. A few years later, she met Aral Campbell, and from that union came three additional children, Gary Campbell, Michael George Campbell, and Delroy Campbell. She loved and cared for her children as best she could. She cared not just for her children, but for other, sorry, for her nieces and nephews and all the children in the neighborhood which she came in contact with. Her children started going to the King's Chapel, UPC Church, and after which, in the 1980s, Mama gave her life to the Lord and became a stalwart member of the King's Chapel United Pentecostal Church. There she served on the auxiliary team, also known as Women's Movement, and at one point she was in charge of the fasting and prayer service on Thursday. She loved the Lord very much. Mama was always committed to Thursday prayer meeting. Even as grandchildren, we know that if we were there in the summer, she had to leave for prayer meeting. We understood that and we know. Because she wouldn't miss the prayer meeting for anything. She was one of the most loving and caring, compassionate person ever. She was a mother figure to those around her. This was evident by the number of children that lived with her at various times. She had a passion for cooking and baking. And I was to understand that she gained this knowledge from her aunt, Bibi, who used to bake back in the days, wedding cakes and all that. And anybody know Maraxi would know that she baked till today. I have not seen a fruit cake apart from Mommy and Shireen and Paula, praise the Lord, who, who you know, inherit the whole baking. I've never tasted, tasted gone to a wedding and tasted any food cake like grandma's food cake. There's none that tastes that good. Along with everything else, cornmeal, pudding, toto, you name it, anything, she could do it. On a Saturday like this, grandma would have already finished the soup. We probably would have eaten it already and hungry again because it was finished from a long time. And she wouldn't call it soup. It was always pot water. And that was the sweetest pot water I ever know. And sometimes you'd ask her, Grandma, why you don't call it soup? Because you don't have everything that must go in there to make it soup. It's just a little pot water. You know, see how it's white. You know, but she's always cooking. She, at one point it would seem like she had a timer that as soon as the stove turned off, then all different types of people pop in and show up to get some of the food. Her kids at one point expressed that they didn't like when she baked because she would give away everything and there was hardly anything left for them to eat. I can also remember that one time when our parents went away to America and grandma used to come and was staying with us and she would give away the dinner. My brother, I remember my brother was very upset one day and he said, grandma giving them the food and when they go home they're going to eat their dinner again and, and, and I only get a little bit of food but grandma didn't care about that. She was always a giver. I remember sometimes when she used to get barrel from America, she would give away everything. A little bag for this person, a little bag for that person. And when she finished packing the bag, the, the food that she had left from the barrel would only last about a week. But that was not a problem for her. 
Maraxi was very committed at every task she had to carry out. She knew it was important to provide for her family. Therefore, she found employment at a betting shop where she was an office attendant and she also cooked lunch for the persons working at the establishment. She worked there for 10 years at the betting shop. She then went to the number two post office where she worked for another 20, 20 years as an office attendant, also looking about lunch again for the employees there. She took pride, anybody know my grandmother? And, and I, even as I looked at her in the, in the casket, my grandmother was a hot girl, per se. She took pride in how she dressed, right? She, she, had a, she had a big bust, but that didn't stop her because she would not leave the house if her bust not, was not properly tucked into her bra and they were up pointing straight ahead. Her, her tummy had to be snuffed in because she had to look like she had a flat tummy and her hips had to be out. So she wouldn't go anywhere unless everything was intact. Her face had to be cool, so she had to use a little face powder to ensure that her face was cool. And we can remember, even when she couldn't see, she would say to Shereen, you put on the, the foundation, and sometimes we would trick her and just use the brush and brush it on, even when there was no powder on the brush. But as far as she's concerned, she had on some foundation and she was ready to go. And as I looked on her, in the, I went and I looked for the breast in the cast. <laughs> and I realized that they, they, were, they are exactly how she would want them to be. Yes. So she also, when she wore some long line brassiere that every grandchild had to know how to hook them. Everybody, whether from the back or from the front, we had to know how to do it. Whether male or female grandchild, it doesn't matter. And one day when she was in the late time, you now when she was already, when she lost her sight and everything, she went to the clinic and the doctor was saying um, that we shouldn't bring her in a, any bra when she was coming to the clinic. Like all of us know, that was not, that, that, like Bada Cat would say, that will never happen. Never happen. That cannot be. Because she was the only way she would not be in a bra if she was in a house dress. And she's not leaving the house in a house dress. So that's not, that will never happen. Right? She was a very independent woman. And she always ensured that she have a little money somewhere tucked away. I remember going to grandma more than one time asking her for money. And she always have it. Whether she lending or she giving or whatever. She always had her money. I remember one time she fainted downtown and no matter what the persons did, they couldn't get her hand open. She fainted downtown and when Uncle Danny, I think it was Uncle Danny that came to pick her up and they realized that she had just gone to the bank and withdrew some money and the money was in her hand middle. And even when she was out cold, nobody could get her hand open to get the money out. That was my grandmother. She lit up her room anywhere she went. She was very outspoken and she was very plain. She loved if you were fat. And if, I remember the first time she went to America, she, everybody she see and them fat, Lord, what are we, you fat? And they had to tell her, Grandma, you can't tell people like that that they are fat in America, they take offense to it. But she enjoyed fat. But don't get too comfortable if Grandma told you you were fat. Because there was that thin line between fat and too fat. And any time you cross that line, she's going to tell you, you're too fat, you need to take off some weight. Right? Or she, would, she was playing, she would tell you, you're too mother, man, you want to put on some weight. She had that problem with herself, too. Sometimes she said, look, I'm slim. And we say, grandma, not even, I can't tell which part of you slim. No part. Right? Because she enjoyed fat. And that's why my, even my son, my second son, she loved him dearly because of how he's chubby. Even the baby, she would take them and feel them and say, Lord, he's fatty. And you could see how pleased she was. Right? Um, she lit up her room anywhere she went. In the last few days of her, she, she was always diabetic and she managed her diabetes very well. She took her insulin and she was never trying to eat anything outside of the way. But when it came on to her birthday, well, it was a different story. She had to have her cake 
she had to have her pizza. She loved Butterflakes party. And when she went to collect her pension, every grandchild and everybody at the house was going to get a piece of Butterflake party. Maybe not a whole one, but at least a half. But she ensured that all of us got Butterflakes party. And even when Juicy Beef came about, I always said to her, Grandma, you can't go Juicy Beef. A Juicy Beef party tastes better. She said, I don't care what I say. Butterflake me love. So you have to eat Butterflake when me bite. Right? But Grandma was always smiling. When you talk to her, she was smiling. She had a beautiful laugh. She wasn't, as I said, she was very outspoken. Another thing that we also knew that she prepared us for this time as grandchildren. Never got to the shop without a bag. And I remember one day I went to the shop without a bag. And I came, you know, happy and cheerful and joyous with the things in my hand. And I brought them to her. And she grabbed me and gave me some beaten. And she said, did I give you anything to advertise? Who said you're going to advertise anything? You think you're a woman? Advertisement brings success. I think everybody knows that saying. She always said, advertisement brings success. And then I'm thinking about it, I say, what does that have to do with now? What, 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 what does that have to do with this incident? Right? But advertisement brings success. And another saying that she would always say is, life is one big road with a lot of signs. Signs and signs and more signs. So there are certain things that grandma would say. She loved her grandchildren. She loved her children. Every one of them she knew. Everybody she knew their personality. She knew who was capable to do what or who would say what and who would not say. Who would, who would always be crying? Who would do this? Who would do that? She knew everybody's personality. She knew everybody's voice. Even if she, when she wasn't seen again, she knew everybody's voice. My mother and, and myself sound alike and I, we could never trick her. If I go in and I say, what's up, Roxy? She would say, Tina. She knew exactly who it was. She also had a selective hearing. So you will be talking to her and she's not hearing what you're saying. But if you call a certain person's name, even from another room, she will hear. And you will hear her say, what do you say about Danny? Or what do you say about Dean? Grandma, nobody never say anything. Nobody not talking to you at this time. And even if we're in another room, and there are other times when you're sitting right before her and talking to her, and she don't hear anything you're saying. So she had a selective hearing. Hear what you want to hear. Right, but my Roxy, just one more incident, just before she died, um, the week before she had a throat problem where we took her to the, the hospital and they had to put a feeding tube in. She had in the feeding tube about two days, about two days. And then she took her time and sit down and she was very determined to. She pulled out the tube, pulled out the tube right out and have it in her hand. And she called Miss Campbell, Miss Campbell was her caregiver. And she said, Miss Campbell, Miss Campbell is right there. And she loved Miss Campbell dearly. Anybody else come, when Miss Campbell returns, Miss Campbell have to come back. Miss Campbell, yes. She loved Miss Campbell dearly. And she called Miss Campbell for the thing. And when she was telling mommy about it, mommy saying so, and she said, want something with some leafy, leafy something. And it, and it have some leafy, leafy something. So mommy says, oh, you know it have any leafy, leafy something on it. Then me no see it. So mommy said, oh, you see it, Roxy. He said, what you me forget to me blind? So she was very, she, she was very precise in what she was doing. And she was very determined in what she was doing. But what I can say for her is that she loved everybody. Even our in, anybody married to anybody, she loved the husband them. All if you, the wife, it, uh, we know of an instance where even when the wife and the husband wasn't getting along, she loved the husband. And she loved them dearly. And she would say, I love such and such a husband, or I love that one husband. My husband, I remember when he, after we got married and he gained some weight, he said, you look good now, man, because she knew him long time. You put on little weights. I like how you look here now. You understand? And whether or not she could see, she could know if people have on good clothes or not. She would say, um, you know, I'm having a nice pants, and she can't see, you know. Yes, probably. Selective sight. Yes, but Grandma, as I said, it's a hard loss. She was 86, and I, I am one of the oldest grandchildren, and I've known her all my life. And she loved Shireen, she loved the kids, she loved everybody. She, you, you never feel like Grandma never loved you. And, you know, on that morning, that day, when she passed away, she, she went peacefully. And as I look at her in the casket, she looked just as peaceful. And 
just want to say, Mary Soul, rest in peace. So I just want to thank everybody that showed up today for this beautiful, wonderful woman. And for you to remember all the good times we had with her and all the lives she changed with her love. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a happy time we'll be when we all get home over by the crystal sea. Never more to roam in the homeland of the soul where the joy bells ring, singing while the angels roll. What a happy time. Come on, sing with me. Somebody said, What a happy time we'll be when we all get home over by the crystal sea. Never more to roam in the homeland of the soul. Joy bells ring, singing while the angels roll. What a happy time! Oh, I'm riding with King Jesus on the Hallelujah train. I'm singing, I'm shouting on the Hallelujah train. Oh, when I reach the station, heaven is my destination. I'm riding with Big Jesus on the Hallelujah One more time, I'm riding with King Jesus on the Hallelujah train. I'm singing, I'm singing, I'm shouting, I'm shouting oh, on the Hallelujah train. Oh Lord, when I reach the station, heaven is my destination. I'm riding with Big Jesus on the Hallelujah train. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm riding with Jesus on the hallelujah train. Just for a few minutes more, I also want to share with you a scripture here from Revelation chapter 21. And verse 4, and it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Today we are here to celebrate the life of Sister Roxtina Ellis. She has run a race and she has completed a race. As the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his one soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul in this life i want you to know that death is sure we don't know when where and how but as time goes one of these days we are going to leave this world Check one, check one, check one, check one. And important that check one. we put God first in our life. One, one, one. The Bible says that when she checking sound, one, checking sound, one, two, one, two. It's going to remain there until the harvest. Check one. So one of us check stays. One. Check on, check on. That's the state that we are going to raise in. And so there can't be any change. 
like death. There's no prayer of purgatory, as some may say, that at death you can be prayed into God's heaven. There's no such thing. John, in his writing states, he says clearly that there's coming a time when there will be no more death. Today, we mourn the loss of our sister. Although she lived to age 84, live a long life, 86, yet we are still in mourning of her. But there's coming a day when death shall be no more. Eternity is long and there will be no easing of pain during that period. For no, Sister Roxtina has no pain. You can say I do whatever you want to say I do about her. You heard the eulogy from Sister Tina that she selects what she wants to hear and stuff like that. Right now she's not hearing us. But there's coming a time when we get into eternity that death will be lost. There will be no death. Praise God. No, no death will be in eternity. And so today I want to encourage all of us. I know the family members are mourning those who are listening, those who didn't get to come. Yes, you're grieving. But there's going to be a resurrection. The trumpet of God is going to sound. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. There is going to be a resurrection. Whether I want to believe it or whether you want to believe it or not, there is going to be a resurrection. The Bible says that some will rise to everlasting life and some will also rise to everlasting punishment. Today, if you hear his voice, Sister Roxino made her decision. She surrendered her life to God. She gave her life to God. And so she has a hope of eternity. In closing, I would like to encourage all of us to make our calling an election sure. Don't wait until it's too late. Do it now. What should it profit us to gain the world? And at the end, we lose our one soul. There is no exchange of our soul. We can't exchange. When the tree falls, it remains there until harvest. And so I encourage you today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Because every man shall stand and give an account of his deeds. Every man will have to give an account of his or her life on that day. Eternity has no ending. It's eternity. It's forever. It's now time for you to surrender your life to God.
allow Jesus Christ to become your Savior. Lord, we want to thank you today. Thank you for the life of our departing sister. She served you the way she knew how. Lord, now you have chosen to take her home. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for her life. I pray right now for all of us that are here, those who are listening, watching, those who have not yet surrendered their lives to you. I pray, oh God, that they will understand that there is coming a day of reckoning where every man will have to give an account. And so, Lord, we ask that you will touch each and every one of us and help us, oh God, to surrender our lives totally and completely to you. In Jesus' name, I ask his mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing a chorus, all right. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and it
we brought nothing into this world and it is sure that we can carry nothing out the Lord gave and the Lord are taken away blessed be the name of the Lord behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this mortal must put on immortality and this I'm sorry, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the Lord for as much as he know that your labor is not in vain for as it had pleased our heavenly father in his wise providence to take unto himself our beloved Roxina Ellis we therefore commit our body to the ground looking for the blessed hope of our Lord Jesus Christ and to his appearing who shall change the body of our humiliation and fashion into new in the likeness of his own body of glory according to the working of his body. We therefore commit our body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who should change the body of our humiliation and fashion it anew in the likeness of his own body of glory according to the working of his mighty power. Could you bow your heads with me? Lord, we 
We thank you today for the life of our sister as you have seen it fit to take her home. Lord, we pray for the family members and even friends who are here and those who are viewing. Lord God, that they will understand that you control life and you are in charge. And there's coming a day when all of us will face death if you tarry as Lord. Help us to be ready. Bless us. Bless the family members. Let your blessings continue to be upon them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I ask his mercies. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod with its crystal Yes, we will gather at the river, the 